All right, hello everyone. I'm Justin. This is Valley Hockey Talk. Today I'll be doing a season preview of the San Jose Sharks. But first, I would just like to thank everyone for watching and please like and subscribe. It's much appreciated. All right, so the San Jose Sharks coming off a big year last year, losing in the conference finals against the St. Louis Blues. Um, and they finished strong in the regular season as well, finishing second in the Pacific Division with 101 points. So a very impressive year overall, season and playoffs. Um, I'm sure Sharks fans are definitely disappointed that they didn't make it to the cup final because um, they've, you know, they've had a straight, very strong team for a long time. Uh, and that core, a lot of that core is still there, uh, but they've definitely made some big changes this offseason. So some big things uh, that Doug Wilson has done is he hasn't brought back guys. So Joe Pavelski, former captain, is gone to the Dallas Stars, signed a big contract there. Um, that's going to be a lot of points out of the lineup. They also lost Jonas Stanskoy and then Gustav Nyquist. So three pretty offensive guys uh, and definitely three big holes to fill within the lineup, especially the top six of the San Jose Sharks. So the Sharks uh, management and coaching has decided that they're going to try their own internal players, uh, their younger players, different guys, and give them shots to fill those roles. Um, it also helps that for the fact that they're tight against the salary cap and they don't have a lot of money to bring in players. Um, so uh, if they can bring in some younger guys from the organization or different guys from the farm team, then they can definitely save some money that way too. So they're going to try that first. So they didn't really make any big moves over the summer. Um, you know, they brought in a guy like Brodzinski. Uh, he's going to be like a fourth line player if he even plays on the team. Um, so then they basically brought in, they're hoping that guys like, uh, um, Dylan Gambrell or Mario Ferraro or Antti Sumella or Alexander True or Lean Bergman or Blotchfield or Chim Lavelski. I probably butchered that last one. Anyways, any of these young guys uh, could definitely fill some of these roles for sure. Um, I have some in the lineup here. I'll get into that a little bit into a little bit later. Um, but they definitely want some of those guys to fill those roster spots. Um, so, and they also re-signed some big game players this summer that they could have lost. So Thornton is back, Joe Thornton, Jumbo Joe, back for one more year at least. And uh, Kevin LeBanc is on a nice little one-way ticket, uh, one-year deal. Uh, so, and also uh, Meyer signed a nice contract. So those are really important signings. Um, Thornton, his presence on the team, he plays more of a third-line center role now, uh, but he just loves being with the boys and they love him and... Um, he could still produce. He put up, uh, you know, in the 50-point range last year. So uh, he's still good. And then uh, LeBanc is a great young player. Expect bigger and better things out of him this year. And Meyer uh, was a huge breakout candidate last year, and he definitely delivered on that. And uh, he, he should continue to flourish into a top player in the league. So just to go through my lineup here, on the first line, I have it loaded up. I don't know if San Jose is necessarily going to always do this with a really loaded up top line. Um, it seems to be the theme in the NHL to really load up the top line. If you look at San Jose, or sorry, look at uh, the Avalanche or the Bruins or some other teams, they really load up that top line. Uh, but they might decide to spread it out a little bit. But for right now, I have Kane on the left side, uh, Couture in the middle, and Meyer on the right wing. Should be a fantastic line. Uh, Kane definitely brings speed and physicality to the line. Uh, definitely some goal scoring. Um, he had 30 goals last year. Logan Couture, the new captain of the team, the number one center of the team, and one of the best playoff performers of the last decade. Uh, he was fantastic in the playoffs. He's fantastic in the regular season. Really hard worker, really great overall player. Uh, doesn't always get the recognition he deserves around the league, um, especially in the East. And then Timo Meyer is, again, I just mentioned him. He's a fantastic player. Kind of had a breakout year last year, 66 points to 78 games, 30 goals. Um, so when you got guys like Meyer and Kane that can both score 30 goals on your top line, centered by a guy like Couture who got 70 points um, in 81 games and had 27 goals, you're looking at a really high-scoring line. So they should be lethal if they're together. On the second line, I have Kevin LeBanc on the left wing. He can play left or right wing. Uh, Thomas Hurdle at center and Dylan Gambrell on right wing. So I'm just going to talk about Hurdle first. Uh, he actually led all forwards on the team in points. He had 77 points in 74 games. Uh, so he had, a, or sorry, he had, uh, 
74 points in 77 games last year and 35 goals, which is really impressive. So, and he's still only young yet. He's only 25 years old. Uh, so, you, you know, he could uh, definitely flourish and be better even next year and put up bigger numbers. We'll see what happens. Uh, kind of depends on his line mates too um, and who uh, DeBoer gives him for line mates. But LeBanc is definitely a good young player. Um, he had 56 points in 82 games last year. Still a very young player, lots of talent. Uh, so that those two might be a really nice combo. Um, I've also seen Evander Kane play with Hurdle lots and then like LeBanc on that top line. Uh, so don't be surprised to see that as well. And then uh, Gambrell, uh, he, so Dylan Gambrell, I'm expecting to, he'll get a chance to play in the top six. He might play on the third line. You could put like Carl, Melka Carlson in there or Gaudreau or uh, Riddell, but they're not really these top, they're not going to really, they're not known for putting points up, I should say. Not really known for scoring goals. They're solid players. They can definitely fill the hole, but they're definitely gonna, the San Jose Sharks are definitely going to want somebody that can put the puck in the net or at least distribute the puck uh, on that second line. So Gambrell, I think, is going to get the chance to do it. Um, he had 45 points in 51 games in the AHL last year, which is pretty good, and he had 20 goals, and he's still a young guy. He's still under 25, so I think he'll get an opportunity to play there. If not, maybe even a, a guy like... Uh, True or um, Bergman or one of their other young players gets a chance to play there. Um, and then on the third line, Joe Thornton centers that third line. Him and Sorensen played well together last year. I have Sorensen there. He's a solid player. And then Melker, Melker Car Carlson sorry, uh, is also a solid player. So that should be a great line again. Great third line. Um, you know, good defensively. Uh, can put up a, a bit of offense and uh, aren't going to be pushovers. And then the fourth line, um, I have uh, Riddell and then uh, Sumela and Gaudreau. Uh, Sumela, you know, he's looked pretty good, so he could actually be moved around the lineup a little bit, uh, depending on how he plays. Right now, I've been plugged in as a fourth line center. Uh, Gaudreau has been solid. He can be a third or fourth line player for sure. Uh, he's looked good. And then uh, Riddell is kind of an older uh, signing of a player um, and I'm not really sure if he'll make the team so kind of like Gaudreau and uh, Riddell and G Gambrill they could I wouldn't be surprised if they made the team or if they didn't make the team it'll just depend on how camp goes and how the first you know 10 or so games of the regular season go and I could also see the San Jose Sharks making a trade for a winger to fill that top six role um, if if necessary, because if they feel like they're not getting enough production from that second line or that third line, I could definitely see them doing a trade. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. Okay, let's move down to the defense, which is probably the strongest part of the Sharks. Uh, they got So I got Brendan Dillon and Eric Carlson as the first pairing. And the second pairing, I have Vlasic and Burns. So Vlasic and Burns have traditionally played together a lot. Um, I could see Vlasic playing with Carlson as well. Um, but I think right now I have Dylan and Carlson there because I think they'll they're, they'll be a really nice pairing. Dylan definitely brings some physicality, uh, a bit more of a stay-at-home defenseman, and Carlson seems to thrive in that environment. Uh, when he was playing at his top, he was playing with a guy like Mark Mathot in Ottawa, uh, who didn't really bring a lot to the table offensively, but was just a, a solid physical stay-at-home defenseman that could, Carlson could count on if Carlson went up in the rush. He knew that Mathot would be back, so I think uh, Dylan can kind of bring that same aspect that my thought did. So I'm expecting a really big year out of Carlson, actually. Um, it seems like he's really healthy coming into training camp this year, which is really important for him. That hasn't happened very often. Um, so if he can get back to the way he used to play with Ottawa, uh, he's going to have an incredible year, and the San Jose Sharks fans are going to be wowed by him every night just because of his speed, his vision, his sauce passes, um, his ability to score, uh, his ability on the power play to keep the puck in. He's just an incredible player. Um, and I think he will take over the number one spot on the D. Uh, Burns is getting a little bit older, and he's not quite as good defensively as Carlson is. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised to see Burns there either. He's an incredible player, especially if Carlson has injury problems. Um, and Burns, again, so just for comparison, like Carlson had 45 points in 53 games, uh, so he was injured lots of the year. Uh, he was almost a point-per-game player, but he was injured a lot of the year. He played really well in the uh, playoffs, though. And then Burns had 83 points in 82 games, which is absurd for a defenseman. Uh, but he's just a fantastic offensive talent and just a great character for the league and for the team. Um, so those, and then Vlasic, Pickles, 
he's always just a stay at home, great defenseman. So with those three guys, Carlson, Burns, and Vlasic, you know your team's going to be good with those three guys no matter what. And then on the third pairing, this could be any guy, any player. Right now I have Mario Ferraro in there because he's playing really good in exhibition season. And a lot of people are thinking he's going to make the team, so I put him in there. And then Dalton Prout is just a fill-in, but it could literally be anybody at a camp. So that third pairing is really up in the air. It doesn't really matter. They're not going to play very much. The top two pairings are going to eat up most of the ice time. Like Carlson's going to play 25 to 27 minutes a night. And same with Burns. So <laughs> there's not much ice time for that third pairing. So it doesn't really matter. But Ferrero has looked good. So he could be an interesting option there for sure. And then the goaltending, Martin Jones and Aaron Dell. Um, Jones was a really solid looking goaltender till this past year. I'll talk more about his issues in a bit. Um, and then dell has been a pretty good backup for the team. So overall, I really like the t lineup. Uh, definitely less deep than last year, especially with Pavelski out. Uh, Pavelski had uh, 64 points in 75 games and 38 goals. So it's a lot of goals to make up for. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, but they do have some interesting young guys. Like I said, if they do a trade or something and get another top six forward, uh, then they should really be in the mix as a cup contender next year. And I wouldn't doubt it if they at the trade deadline they did do something like that. Um, so we'll see, but I really like for fantasy, obviously, uh, the top line is great. Couture, Kane, Meyer, they're all fantastic picks. Hurdle's a fantastic pick and LeBanc is a nice pick too. So all five of those guys are great picks for fantasy. They'll all have good value. And then on defense, obviously Eric Carlson, Brent Burns, um, are two of the top defensemen coming off the board. They should definitely be, uh, top three defensemen next year, if not one and two. And then Jones, he can be, you know, he could be a later pick for a goalie. He could be good. He's going to get the wins. The Sharks are going to win a lot of games. He'll get the wins. Just to say percentage of goals against, I'm not too sure about. So that kind of brings me to the questions about the team. Um, so I can start with the goaltending just because I mentioned Aaron Jones, or sorry, Aaron Jones, uh, Martin Jones. He had 36 wins last year, which is really good, uh, but his save percentage was uh, 896 save percentage and a 2.94 goals against average. So he was almost letting in three goals a game, which is terrible. And he wasn't that much, he wasn't much better in the playoffs, which is also unfortunate. So if they could get some better goaltending out of Martin Jones, like San Jose could be a really scary team next year, especially if they, he could get hot in the playoffs, like Tuka Rask did for the Bruins. Um, so we'll see if Jones can pull it together because Aaron, jo Aaron Dell definitely isn't a starting goaltender. So, they need Jones to pick it up or they're going to have to find another goaltender. Simple as that. And then another thing, the main question for me, well, goaltending is pretty, very important, obviously. But the other main question would be, uh, you know, can the young guys step in? Uh, who are they going to get to fill in the voids left by Pavelski and Donskoy and Nyquist? And even Justin Braun isn't on the team anymore on the defensive side. So they've got quite a few holes to fill. Um, I think they got enough talent to do it. I think they might have to do a trade midseason if they really want to be true Stanley Cup contenders. Uh, but I think they got a great team this year. They're always in the mix. Uh, they're definitely going to be fighting for the top three spots in the Pacific Division. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see them one, two, or three. I'm going to predict them to finish second in the division again this year. Um, and I think it should be another fun year for Sharks fans to watch. Uh, so, yeah, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.